Hello, welcome to the mini lesson for unit five. This mini lesson is about researching critical perspectives. When you write about a work of literature, you are engaging in a conversation that involves other readers, students, and critics who have read the same text and shared their interpretations of the text in writing. The stories we've read this semester are so widely read that a wealth of critical literature has grown up around each text. The extent of this critical literature should not intimidate anyone or act as a disincentive to contribute your own point of view. While A Good Man is Hard to Find may have been read and written about by thousands of people, it has never been written about by you. Your perspective is unique and your response to the story is unprecedented. If you write from your own personal response to the story, whatever you say will constitute an authentic contribution to the ongoing conversation about these stories. The purpose of familiarizing yourself with the critical literature on a story is not so that you can adopt the interpretations of others, nor should it intimidate you with the sense that it's all been said before. Seeing the kinds of interpretations that other writers have developed of a particular story allows you to position your own response to the text within a scholarly dialogue. You can agree with another critic or disagree with her. You can write pages and pages of analysis about another critic's observations, or you can simply refer to the critic's observation in passing. When you refer to another critic's perspective in your own writing, you bolster your own authority as a writer by demonstrating that you are aware of the critical conversation. Moreover, by incorporating these other perspectives into your own essay and responding to them, you impress upon your reader that you are even more well positioned to respond authoritatively to the story than these other critics, since you have absorbed their points of view into your own interpretation. Reading these essays can also help you develop and refine your own ideas about the story as you react to the insights of other critics. The most important thing to keep in mind is that when you refer to other critics in your essays, you are in control. You call the shots and you decide what parts of a critical article you choose to respond to or to ignore, as well as how you want to use the reference in your own argument. Here are some specific ideas of ways to incorporate critical articles into your own essays. The following examples refer to a critical article about A Good Man is Hard to Find that has been included in your Week 5 course materials. Number one, use a brief quote from the article to support a certain approach to your interpretation. So this is a passage from a student paper. The significance of the theme of evil in A Good Man is Hard to Find has been discussed by critics such as John Desmond, who writes that, quote, good and evil as potentialities and as actualities are inextricably intertwined in human beings, and this is true for both the grandmother and the misfit. Here you can see that the student simply borrowed the idea of talking about the theme of good and evil in the story from John Desmond and is now free to go on and talk more about the, uh, the theme of good and evil uh, simply because John Desmond talked about it, so now I can talk about it too. Uh, suggestion number two, use a brief quote from the article to support an alternative reading of the story. So here's the quotation from a student paper. As you can see, it's nicely framed. John Desmond is one of many critics who has interpreted A Good Man is Hard to Find as a story about, quote, the mystery of evil and its relation to the action of grace, end quote. But the religious interpretation of Desmond and similarly minded critics obscures an equally important theme in the story, the theme of gender relations. So here the uh, student has done something a little bit different. They've used uh, John Desmond's religious reading and pivoted from his religious reading into their own feminist reading. So uh, just because, so they just used this idea of religion as just kind of an excuse to bounce off in another direction, which is perfectly legitimate. Number three, use a general description of the article to establish the legitimacy of applying a certain frame of reference to the story. So here's the uh, quotation from the student paper. John Desmond's essay on A Good Man is Hard to Find makes extensive use of biblical passages to shed light on the meaning of O'Connor's story. One passage that he does not consider, however, is Exodus 20.13, Thou shalt not kill. So here, what the student has done is basically used John, the fact that John Desmond used a lot of biblical quotations in his essay as a way of saying, well, John Desmond used the Bible to make his argument, so I can use the Bible to make a different argument. And so the student is going off in a different direction, using the idea of writing about the Bible that John Desmond established a precedent for, and taking it in the student's own direction. Suggestion number four, take a certain point made by a critic in passing and delve into more detail. So here's the example from uh, the student paper. 
John Desmond indicates that O'Connor's depiction of the misfit resembles her impression of the writer Albert Camus, and a close look at O'Connor's own writing about Camus does in fact reveal a number of compelling similarities between O'Connor's representation of her fictional mass murderer and her thoughts on the famous existential author. Uh, here, uh, John Desmond made this one very small point in his long essay, just in passing, just in one sentence, about uh, the relationship between the misfit and what O'Connor wrote about Camus. But this student is going to go into a lot more detail and take this one tiny point and develop it into a whole essay all about uh, the relationship between O'Connor's representation of the misfit and O'Connor's statements about the writer Albert Camus. Suggestion number five, kind of the opposite of what we just saw, take a certain point made by a critic in passing and disagree with it. So here's the sentence from a student paper. John Desmond indicates that Flannery's depiction of the misfit resembles her impression of the writer Albert Camus, but a close look at O'Connor's own writing about Camus does reveal a number of fundamental differences between O'Connor's representation of her fictional mass murderer and her thoughts on the famous existential author. So here I'm looking at the differences between what O'Connor wrote about Camus and how she represents the misfit. Uh, same idea, uh, same te technique of using the source. I'm taking this tiny little point made in passing by Desmond and using it as a starting point for a whole other argument uh, where I disagree with this reading about uh, the relationship between Camus and the misfit. There are many other ways that you may choose to introduce other critics into your essays, but these are a handful of the most common strategies. Whatever you do, remember that your secondary sources are working for you. They may be successful critics and authors, but when you invite them into your essay, you're the boss. You can and should feel empowered to cut their sentences up, cherry pick useful tidbits from their essay, and even bend their meanings to make their words fit more comfortably into the essay that you are composing. Ultimately, you and these other critics are on an equal footing. You are both using your own understanding of the world to make sense of a riddle to which there is ultimately no definitive answer. Working hand in hand with these critics, you can enrich the ongoing intergenerational conversation about the meaning of literary texts while simultaneously challenging yourself to discover new critical insights and new perspectives. 